Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. You join me, it's just me today. We're doing handheld video. We are taking the RAV4 Prime, the plug-in hybrid with an 18 kilowatt hour battery, about 15 is usable, 14 and a half. We don't know the exact number, but somewhere around there. We're taking it on two range tests. As we do with every plug-in hybrid, we're doing a city range test and then a highway range test. It's incredibly windy today, as you can see, which is not good for results. However, I do have the car just for a short period of time and I have a way to counteract some of the wind. It's freezing, let's jump inside. I'm gonna talk about the test procedures and how we're going to run this test to counteract some of the elements that we are facing. Let's do it. You can see here our Tesla wall connector is charging up the RAV4 Prime with a Tesla to J1772 adapter. Uh, this one's from Quick Charge Power, but we have a whole bunch of them. Uh, basically, what it's doing now is the car just ticked over to completed charging. However, it's still charging as you can see and what it's doing is it's preconditioning. I have it warming up the car, warming up the battery pack using shore power. This one is the XSE trim. What that means is it has the same drivetrain as the normal SE, the base version of the RAV4 Prime, but it gets a 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger. That is twice the charging speed or charging power into the high voltage battery as you get with any of the other uh, RAV4 Primes. Now this one also has the premium package. It's a fully maxed out, fully specced RAV4 Prime. It's got a big glass roof, for example. These are super, super hard to find. Thanks to Toyota for getting us one out here to Colorado to test for you guys, but uh, they are in high demand. And I think we're gonna see some impressive results here on our range test. So it's about time we unplug and go and we're running into an issue. You can see here when I click this little button up here, the charging stops and I can hear the contactors open up on our uh, level two charger here. However, the connector is still locked to the car. So similar to that Volvo that we tested a little while ago, you need to physically click unlock on the key and then it's kind of in there. Hold on, gotta put the key in the pocket. Click unlock, choo, choo, choo. Then we can pull it out. What a silly design. It should just carry the way as normal EVs where when it's done charging or you click the little button, the little switch right here, it unlocks it from the car. Maybe that's a setting. If it is, comment down below but most PHEVs operate like this and it just seems unnecessary. Another thing about unnecessary, look how big and squeaky <laughs> this charging port cover is. That is, this is a little tiny J1772 port. Why do you need this giant thing? I'm sure it carries over from another Toyota product, but man, is that annoying. Okay guys, we are in the RAV4 Prime. I have not turned it on because I don't wanna use any high voltage battery. Let's talk about how this test is gonna run. We are going to start here at our house and we're going to drive in our city range test. Now for these tests, I typically keep the car under 40 miles per hour, stop and go traffic, and they're pretty hard to replicate. You know, we, we do our 70 mile per hour loops, which we'll do later, and that we can pretty much say same bit of road, similar weather conditions, and we get a good idea. Here in the city test, it's a little bit more difficult to get a solid one, but it will give us a really good data point as to how the car does in a city environment. Now, it is windy outside and cold. So let's talk about the cold. What I've done is I've already driven this car today. I drove it down to about 75% state of charge. I then charged it all the way back up to 100% just to get some heat in the system and to make sure it's truly fully charged. Now for the wind, what we're going to do is we are going to drive in a loop style test. So we're gonna start and as soon as we start getting low, I'll head back here to the house and hopefully that counteracts some of the wind on the car. We'll have some headwind, we'll have some tailwind. Now with wind at highway speeds, at least, the faster you go with highway speeds, the more wind there is, there's more current you need to output and then there's heat loss. So you're actually losing usable capacity because you're outputting more power. The same will be here for the city, but I don't expect that to be as big of a variable because our speeds will be so much lower. So now let's start her up foot on the brake, power button, comes to life, nice and silent. We're gonna put the air conditioning to 70 degrees auto. I'm gonna select eco heat and cool. I'm gonna put the car in eco mode. It's predicting 38 miles of range, 37 degrees out. And here we go in our range test. I have the car locked in EV mode. I'm gonna turn on auto hold so I don't need to keep the car, um, keep my foot on the brake pedal when we come to a stop. 
We have a beautiful glass roof here inside. And we're just gonna drive gently around the city, kind of explore, figure out, you know, no set loop for our city test. Now I expect this to perform the best out of any car we've ever tested in a city environment. Uh, let's talk about the drivetrain while we're there. So this is actually the second fastest Toyota on sale, which is so interesting. The only Toyota you can buy that's faster than this is the Supra. And so this thing's really quick. Even in electric mode, if you're turning and you floor it, it'll spin the tires. Like tons of torque here. You truly get an electric vehicle driving experience. Uh, unlike most PHEVs, like the Volvo XC90 we just did a range test on, if you go back in our videos, that has okay acceleration in electric mode, but you really need the gas engine to kick on to really maintain it and to really accelerate. It, here in this car, not the case at all. This thing rips in electric mode. Now we're not gonna be doing that. Again, we have the car in eco mode, everything's set. I'm not gonna use my heated seats and I'm not gonna use my heated steering wheel. I'll turn that off now. I will say the heated steering wheel only heats the side of the wheels, not the top or bottom. <laughs> so if you drive like me, you're fine. But if you like to do the lean, then no, you cannot You cannot drive with the, your hand on the top of the wheel and get any benefit of the heated steering wheel. I've never seen that in a car before. That's pretty interesting. Um, so here we're coming to a stop. An auto hold kicks us on. You don't need to hit the brakes. We have an indicated 100% state of charge on our battery. Here I can go to the menus, see some info on our eco stuff. Let's see, let's clear our trip. Are you sure you wanna delete all fuel consumption records? Sure. Uh, the car is predicting a 399 mile range with a full tank of fuel and a full battery charge. And we're gonna just go to our energy. Now this car is all wheel drive and it is all wheel drive in electric mode as well. So you have three motors on this car, something like this, a lot of motors and you have one in the back, one in the middle, and then a little generator on the engine as well. So you can actually charge the high voltage engine or high voltage battery from the combustion engine if you are driving into a city and you wanna make sure you drive electric, for example. Of course, you'll have worse fuel consumption on the way if you do that. You can hold your state of charge. There's a mode for that. So you can use internal combustion engine driving on the highway and then drive electric in the city where it's most efficient. A lot of cool stuff going on in this car, tons of different modes. You have a trail mode. Um, we're gonna take this up into the trails probably for out of spec reviews and do a little bit of off-roading in this car, see how it does. See if we can do off-roading in the snow in electric mode, that'll be kind of interesting. Other than that, really comfortable car. We're gonna keep the gauge here on the left in the eco modes. I'm not gonna go into the power, but I am gonna drive normally. Um, I run all these tests with air conditioning on for a reason. And that reason is I don't want to get cold or warm, but also HVAC is a super important part of efficiency. Very few people will actually drive their cars with the HVAC system off. And so that plays into our testing. And uh, yeah, here we go. Let's go see what we can get. We are uh, 0.8 miles into our test so far. <laughs> we are now driving around my city here in Colorado and let's talk about how this car drives. Now I told you it's all wheel drive in electric mode. I can actually pull up a little menu here that not only says if I'm charging or regenning, but also where the power is coming from. So from a launch, the rear motor helps, but when I'm just cruising, it's primarily front wheel drive. Uh, and that must be the most efficient setup to actually just not use the rear axle for power while cruising. Similar to the Porsche Taycan actually in range mode. Um, I wanna talk to you about regen and brake blending because it's a little, Mm, not the best. So what we have when you come off the accelerator pedal in eco mode is the car will charge and regen slightly, like just enough to kind of stop the car from coasting. It's just a, like a normal gas car, just pulls a little bit. When you put your foot on the brake pedal, the first bit of pressure will control the regenerative braking, and that's an electronic signal. And then as you push harder, the hydraulic brakes, the physical, um, you know, friction brakes, the disc brakes will activate. Uh, and that's that's fine, that's normal. A lot of EVs work like this. What I don't like driving around the city so much is the blending. It seems that uh, it could be that the battery is fully charged, but the brake pedal is expecting, I feel like more regen than I'm getting. And by the time I push past uh, the regen, it's just hard on the brakes. It's like a hard blend, it's like, I can't break smoothly and we'll see if that changes when the battery depletes because what I suspect is happening is the car saying give me more regen give me more regen give me more regen and then transition to physical brakes 
but the car can't actually take any more energy uh, because the battery's full. And uh, so that's, that's a possibility. We'll check in with that later on in this test to see if that blending point gets better. And if it truly only happens when the battery is full, I guess that's fine. It's easy to drive around. Now I have driven RAV4 Prime many times now uh, on the racetrack. We have a one lap with the RAV4 Prime, which actually surprised me. It did really well. This car is 302 horsepower, really nice chassis balance. I actually enjoy driving this car spiritedly. This one's expensive though. This is just under $50,000. It's like uh, 46, 47, 48. I don't remember the exact number. I left the sheet of paper at home, but it's not a cheap car. It does get a tax credit. I don't know if it's the full 7,500. I believe it might be, um, but it's still a lot of money and it doesn't feel all that nice in here. Now, my recommendation is actually to go for the base RAV4 Prime, not the XSE. The XSE gets you a whole bunch of nice technical features, digital dash here, big glass screen, the 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger, of course, as I mentioned, if you get everything uh, wireless charging. I, you know, I, I don't remember offhand what comes with what, but I remember being super pleased with the SE, and that had cloth seats and felt nice and it looked just as good. Uh, and this one's a lot more money and I don't really see the benefit. Sound system's great, you know, everything sounds good, but if you, this is not a car that you're gonna have an emotional connection with, this is not a car that's gonna feel special to you in any way, this is purely a device to get from A to B in a very economical way. If you're gonna spend $50,000 on a car, get something you'll truly love and, and really enjoy. I don't believe that this is that kind of car at all. This is a, a utility device to get you around. And as a device, it's one of the best. You know, I, I always struggle with the plug-in hybrid conversation. Is this, you know, the best of both worlds? Is it the worst of both worlds? And I still don't know. And I'm really looking forward to driving this this week because this is the longest range plug-in hybrid that I'm able to test uh, for an extended period of time. Now we've done a Polestar 1, which had like a 34 kilowatt hour battery pack and CCS charging, and that's a plug-in hybrid, but I didn't live with that car for a week like I will with this. So uh, we'll see how much I like it. It'll be interesting. Uh, so far, we're still indicating 100% state of charge and we've been driving for quite a while. So I think this is gonna be the most EV-like PA GV that you can get but then if you're gonna spend 50 grand why not just get a full electric car and I guess your argument could be towing sure this can tow 2,500 pounds and you have a gas engine which is easy to fill up here in Colorado we have limited charging infrastructure up in the mountains so for exploration this is great so there's reasons why people will buy a PHEV and if you're gonna get one do you just get the one with the most amount of range these are all the questions I have uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on PHEVs in the comments below. I'll update you when we get around 50% state of charge, driving around here again, 40 miles an hour in a city environment. Uh, we're driving in loop style to counteract some of this wind that we have going on. And um, really curious to see what you guys think about PHEVs. We're just cruising around the city and we've come across something I've been wanting to show you guys for a little while. I hope you can see it. I don't actually know if you can. I'm just gonna pull behind here. We have Nissan Leaf parking enforcement vehicles. It's so interesting. They have these things kitted up with all the license plate reading cameras around it. They're just in front of me here. You'll see them as uh, we're turning left. And um, yeah, these guys are, they just, charge them up every night and they use them as fleet vehicles. We have a couple Chatamo chargers around town for them, although for the most part, they're just level two charged. And uh, yeah, just uh, pretty cool to see the parking enforcement using electric vehicles. I love to see more EVs being used in fleet scenarios. I think it's a really great opportunity to reduce your running costs and emissions, of course, um, and they're just better to drive. So what a great thing to just cruise around the city and if you can all the time, nice. Guys, we've been driving for an hour and 16 minutes. We've gone 23.5 miles. We are not even to half battery yet. We are close. I wanted to update you on the brake pedal situation. The update is not good. It's still bad blending. Uh, it is, you know, regen for the first bit. And then as soon as it transitions to friction brakes, it's like, and then you let off and you're 
moving around and I thought it's something I could get used to, but no, I've been doing a lot of stop and go. Right now the car is on adaptive cruise control and lane tracing, so it's got lane centering and distance, so it's actually driving itself. It says hold steering wheel, okay. Uh, so you got to monitor, it's level two driver assistance, of course, it still requires the human. Now this isn't Toyota's top spec safety system. Is it gonna slow down? Yes, it will, there we go. <laughs> it slowed down very aggressively at the end. Okay, that was not smooth. Also, the sun's pointing right at the camera, so maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Um, that was my first time trying out the system just here. And um, yeah, the, the car's pretty good. Gotta say, I like it. There are steering wheel paddles, and they do downshift like it's changing gears and it does seem to increase the regen slightly so you can get more uh, throttle or more regen off the throttle pedal however it doesn't it goes right back to drive again so I'm just gonna not even factor that in there's no one pedal drive setting it should be also uh, the range is insane around the city you know we've been again under 40 miles an hour a lot of it less than 40 miles per hour because it's been pretty trafficy downtown and um, yeah 32 degrees out it's freezing outside pretty big winds and the range is truly insane uh, <laughs> I'm kind of getting bored and hungry uh, so I guess I have another at least hour and a half to go this is a long test uh, but it'll be interesting to see it's a great test if you're going to be ubering with this car by the way rear air vents does it have yes it does so that's great um, it seems to like tick all the boxes of everything you'd want in a car which is great and it, it doesn't do anything bad it's just it has so much electric range why not just make it a full electric version Toyota you had a RAV4 EV we actually have a drag race coming up this video will go up first of a RAV4 Prime versus an old school Tesla powered RAV4 EV it's really interesting we shot that a few months ago and uh, it's in the queue to go up at some point I think you guys will enjoy that I certainly did and um, if Toyota just stuck with making an electric RAV4 this would have been even better I think because it's it's a pretty good PHEV it's got tons of range so why even give it a gas engine? Ah, I, I, I'm confused about this car still, as you can tell. Anyway, we're about 60% state of charge. We've driven, uh, oh, I should say, I always set tire pressures to manufacturer ratings. Uh, we've driven 25 miles, near as makes no difference. So we're gonna see maybe 50 miles on a charge, I don't know. Lots of smoke up ahead. I don't know if a car is on fire or what, but I'm gonna avoid that situation and just keep making right turns driving around the city at 25 to 40 miles an hour basically okay well this is weird at 43 miles it just kicked out of EV mode why is this it says EV mode unavailable battery low but uh, there's still plenty of battery left it, at least it's blue it says 100% to zero maybe it just reserves that there's nothing I can do to make this go back into EV mode. So it must not let you use the full battery all the way down to zero. Anyway, we're, I guess, almost home. It's a near as makes no difference a loop. 43.0 miles. I pulled right over as soon as I saw the EV light go away. It beeped at me. I was like, what on earth? Um, here, I'll take a little video. I know this is not the most professional. And I'll show you here. Take a look. You can see here, there's still plenty of battery left before it hits zero but then it's blue so I guess the green is usable and the blue is what it reserves to be a full normal hybrid and you can see here I'm clicking EV mode and it says it's unavailable battery low and then I can also click this HV EV and it says EV mode battery low so there we have it uh, the RAV4 Prime doesn't let you use the full battery what a surprise uh, but we did get 43 miles of driving range around the city, which it took two hours and 12 minutes. I was going really slow, uh, but I was just driving around the city here in Fort Collins. And um, I guess that's a little disappointing because you would think it could just drive on gas once you tell it you want to be in EV mode. Now, if I had it in normal hybrid vehicle mode, I could see this totally fine, reserving battery for wide open acceleration, for towing up long hills. But if I'm telling it I wanna be in EV only mode, let me use the full battery. So I guess what we're gonna do is drive it home, we'll plug it in, 
will use that, you know, 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger. So it'll go twice as fast as the normal car, the base car to charge up to a hundred percent. Um, although it's probably a little bit faster than twice as fast because keep in mind, whenever it's charging, it has to run pumps and there's losses. This is just less time. It has to do all that. So we'll charge it up to a hundred percent. We'll jump out on the highway and do our 70 mile per hour. We are going to be battling some serious wind, uh, on this highway trip though. So we're definitely doing a loop style test. No question. And uh, it's been windy here in town as well, but 43 miles, that's impressive that we were able to go that far on uh, electric. And now you can see when I put my foot down, the gas engine is on. Huh, how about that? What a surprise. Okay, well, I'd say that's one surprisingly good electricity, but it looks like we have another 20% of the battery left. I was really trying to go for, uh, you know, 50 plus miles here. I thought it would do that, no problem. And I was like, maybe it would even do 60, but it doesn't let you use the full high voltage battery down to zero. Oh, well, 43 miles, still the longest plug-in hybrid we have tested in our city range test up to this point. Got to give it to Toyota on that one. That's pretty good. Let's run home get some food on the way, charge it up to 100%, head out for our 70 mile per hour loop style test. Now this charger can output everything this car can take. This is a 48 amp, 240 volt uh, charger that I have here. Uh, this can only do 40 amps max. Now the car's not even gonna pull that. I think it's about 26, 27 amps, maybe less to get it up to 6.6 .6 kilowatts, maybe 30, who knows, but we're definitely not maxing anything out. So we've just plugged it in and the battery is as low as it will let us drive to. And it says it will be fully charged in three hours and 10 minutes. Really not bad at all. So we'll let it charge up. I guess that would be closer to six hours if you had the base one, which is really a long time, I'd say, for a plug-in hybrid. It's nice to have the six kilowatt onboard charger, the 6.6, .6, but really is it worth any more money over the 3.3? I don't believe so because it doesn't limit you from driving around. So let's get it charging and we'll come back to it in about three hours. As soon as it completes at 100%, we'll head out for our 70 mile per hour highway test. Oh yes. We now have a fully charged RAV4 Prime and I'm gonna go through, oh, that is a tight charge port right there. We're gonna go through and run through our testing procedures for the 70 mile per hour test. It is a little different than our city tests in the fact that we need to make sure we're full by the time we're driving at 70. So let me show you how we can do that. Also. It doesn't squeak today. It just squeaked before, but not today. Yes, it is the next day, by the way. Uh, wind is a little bit died down. So let's close up the garage and head on out. Here we go, remote keyless entry into the RAV4 Prime. Let's turn it up without my foot on the brake. Let's see what it says here. Put it on accessory power. I guess I have to click it one more time. There we go. You can see 100% charge on the battery. Before we start it, I'm gonna put it in charge hold. So I'm locking it in HV mode. So I think, there we go, HV mode. We're not using any climate. We're gonna turn the air conditioning down to 70 auto. The engine is now running, the internal combustion engine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drive to the highway, get up to speed at 70 miles per hour on the combustion engine, and then we will lock it in EV mode. And just like all of our tests, we're gonna lock it in EV mode once we're cruising at 70 miles per hour. This is how we do it with our PHEVs that allow us to hold the state of charge and we will do a loop style test to see how much highway range we can get. Let's buckle up and head on out. We are just about to merge onto the highway here, so let's get everything set up. We are in uh, high voltage hold state of charge mode. We're gonna set our cruise control at 70, confirm with our GPS uh, that the 70 mile per hour indicated is true 70 miles per hour. We're gonna reset our trip odometer at the same time I reset the trip. We're gonna lock it in EV mode, so we will have everything ready to go. So let's merge up to speed on the combustion engine here. I have it locked in manual shifting mode just to ensure that the combustion engine is on. So here we go, merge it up. We do have some winds today. We have about a 10 mile per hour side wind, which is not ideal, but this is way better than yesterday. So let's get the speed up to 70 miles per hour. 68, 69, 70. Now we do not want to have drafting advantage. The good news is though, the speed limit's much higher than 70. So let's lock us in at 70 miles per hour. 
I have the adaptive cruise control on, I have the lane tracing on, so it's lane centering for us here. And now I'm going to, at the same time that I reset the trip computer, let's see, and we are locked in EV mode now. As we're approaching our halfway point, you can probably hear how windy it is in here. And the side winds just kicked up, we're getting a gust. So what I wanna do is turn around, get back going the other way. We've used about maybe 40% of our usable capacity. Again, like I showed you yesterday, when that gauge goes down into the blue, it turns on the combustion engine. So we don't really get to go all the way down to zero. Uh, our efficiency hasn't been that great. Uh, we'll let you know the final number once we make the loop. Looks like we have an exit coming up here, which is great. Uh, but the adaptive cruise control, the lane tracing, uh, lane centering has been fantastic. Blind spot monitoring, this car is comfortable on the highway. It's firm, it's not like a cushy ride. It's no like, uh, you know, Mercedes EQC or something like this, but it is uh, extremely comfortable for the off-road ability of this car as well. We'll test that, like I said, in another video, but gotta say this thing's great cruising and also no thermal limitation cruising at 70 the car doesn't seem to care there's no uh, like throttling back of available power it's just pushing us along you know we saw the Volvo on our initial stretch when we had a slight incline that it couldn't actually maintain 70 miles per hour and in this car it's no problem we are coming up to our exit. I just ducked behind this truck here to make our exit. And wow, am I glad we are getting off and turning around. You can see here, we've used about half of our usable available battery. Uh, again, I'm guessing it kicks on around 25%, maybe 20% state of charge. We are just gonna coast into the stop here, make our full lefts, get back going the other way. What we do the loop style tests for on the highway is to counteract any elevation advantage as well as wind. With a side wind though, it doesn't help as much because we're kind of getting hit on both runs with indirect wind. Um, but that's okay. I think, look, this is, will give us a good idea. Uh, we're doing this on chilly days anyway, and this is real world. You may have to drive your RAV4 Prime on a windy day in the real world on a 50 degree day. Also, look how gorgeous the Rocky Mountains are today. Never gets old, they are beautiful. So here we are, turning back onto the highway. On the return, we always merge back up to speed using the high voltage system. So we are using the battery pack to accelerate us up to 70 miles per hour. We'll lock us back in on lane tracing. And then from there, we will uh, go in this direction until the uh, battery kicks on. So we've estimated about half the way the other direction and that's that's about the best way we can do it see here we are at 70 miles per hour using electricity alone I'm going to click this button here on the wheel lock it in with the minus button here we're gonna set it to 70 miles per hour and now we're just cruising along at 70 the car is actually steering and doing everything by itself we are down to zero miles of EV range with 31.1 miles so far. It has not kicked off. We are still running on the battery pack, as you can see here. Um, let's see what kind of uh, range we get out of this thing. We've gone past our exit, so either I turned around a little early, which I suspect I did, but also I think we were a little bit more efficient heading in this direction because the side winds were pretty much right off the side, but I think they were pushing us forward a little bit. Oh, we just kicked on. 31.6 miles here we are on uh, gasoline here you can see 31.7 we took we kicked out at 31.6 we are now in HV mode that is pretty good you know it's EPA rated 42 miles but again that's city and highway in the city we matched it on the highway we didn't quite and I think that's about the same for every PHEV we've tested so Considering the colder temperatures, 54, considering the wind, uh, I'd say that's good. I think best case scenario, you might get another mile or two out of it. Maybe, maybe. I feel like we had a little wind advantage on the way back, uh, but that's why we do a loop style test because we had a wind disadvantage on the way up. So now we are uh, uh, gonna head back home, but that was an awesome little thing. 32 uh, miles or so, 31 miles. I can't even remember what I said, but you heard the number. And uh, what do I think of the RAV4 Prime's EV range? Well, gotta say, that's pretty impressive. You can do almost your full commute. If you have a highway commute, less than a city, of course, but if you're on a 40 mile commute in the US, at least you're probably hitting the highway. So at least now you know how far you can drive electric 
while cruising at 70. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for plenty more RAV4 Prime content. This will not be the last video of RAV4 Prime stuff. And uh, comment below what you'd like to see us do. Have a great one. Bye-bye.